The Cincinnati Bearcats, of course, last year, this team was a college football playoff finalist. Uh, they were one of the top four teams. They played Alabama. Uh, they did get beat, but they showed well in that performance. Luke Fickle doing his thing. He ain't interested in other jobs. He's about to move into the Big 12, and he thinks they can dominate in the Big 12. They were 13-1 and last season. Their postgame win expectancy said that they should have been around 11-2, and but they did get those wins that they needed. They were 8-0 in the conference, and then, of course, won the conference title game over Houston. Uh, projected SP Plus record for this year is 10-2. and Their returning production, only 54%. That's number 107 in the country. They lost Desmond Ritter. They lost Jerome Ford. They lost Sauce Gardner, Alec Pierce, MyJ Sanders, uh, Curtis Brooks. They lost the linebackers, Beavers, and DeBlanco. Kobe Bryant, the cornerback, is gone. The safety, Brian Cook, is gone. Uh, and yet they still have recruited at a really, really good level. The roster strength is number 51 in FBS right now, per the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. Uh, you know, let's let's talk about the... Uh, look, all the numbers were good last year. Let's talk about the offense. It's always good when all five of your starting offensive line return, especially with three all AC, uh, AAC guys on the right side. But how how, if you're an offense, do you go about replacing the quarterback, the running back, and your wide receivers? Uh you know, the way you do that, I mean, you got you to go to the transfer portal, right? And, and they did. Well, you don't but, have to, but yeah. And so They've been recruiting. Oh, yeah. Oh, 100%. I mean, they they certainly, uh, the issue is that they don't have a ton of experience. And that's that's where it comes. Now, the offense, of course, uh, their returning production is uh, number 83 in FBS is 58%, but a lot of that's because of the offensive line all coming back. And that is a starter for sure. If you have production... Uh, you can do all kind of stuff. Ben Bryant is back. He transferred back to Cincinnati after leading Eastern Michigan to a bowl game last year. Uh, I would imagine we might see more explosiveness with Hawaii wide receiver Nick Mardner transferring in. Uh, their explosive rate last year was number 71 in FBS on offense. They could have stood to be a little bit stronger there. Uh, offensively, uh, PPA per drive, number 40 in FBS. Uh, on the defense, like Fickle's defenses are always good. Uh, number 111 in returning production and losing all those NFL guys is going to be tough. Like, it, Do you think this might be kind of a rebuild situation? Uh, no. Nope. I don't think it's going to be a rebuild at all. I think they've been recruiting. I think they've been building classes. So, yes, they lost guys, and the guys coming in might not be as good as them, but they made it to the playoff. Okay, they can still go 10-2 and two and not make it to the playoff. I think you're. I, I think you're right. I think you're 100 right. I think they're going to go 10 and two. I think they're going to be really good at football. And and you know, could they beat Arkansas? Could they beat one of the other two big teams that have gotten this? You know, conference. You know, maybe, probably. You know, there's a world where that happens, and they win them all. But I don't think that. I think they'll lose two of those games. I just don't lose two. Uh, the defensive line and the linebackers are going to be good. Uh, secondary looks a little suspect. Um, outside of the cornerback Bush and the safety Hicks that are coming back, uh, there's not a lot of depth anywhere here. It doesn't look like. I mean, they, this is going to be a young team. Uh, what I've got here, uh, as far as keys to the season, if a team, uh, if the team can find a way to win at Arkansas, the rest of the schedule does look manageable, and they could certainly lead to another 10-plus win season. Uh, you got to figure out if Bryant or Prater is your quarterback. I would imagine Bryant is with him coming in for one last season. Um uh, and you got to work on chemistry early and often. The running back, Kiner, should fill in right where Ford left off. Kiner, of course, coming you know him well, coming from LSU. Uh, they got to clean up the penalties. They were number 111 in penalties per game last year, but only number two in turnover margin, so that's good. Uh, stay on that trajectory, and, and you're all right. And sometimes these penalties per game is not such a bad thing, right? Uh, the penalties per game situation could be because they are really, really aggressive, and that can be a good thing, especially with a good defensive football team. Uh, so I don't want to, you know, I don't want to just gloss over that. Um, clean up the penalties. Uh, continue to not turn the ball over. It should be another successful year. It may not be playoff caliber. I agree with you. I've got them at nine and three. I've got them losing to Arkansas, SMU, and UCF. Uh, but I could see them winning any of those games. I, you know, I certainly don't see them winning all three, but. But hey, it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me if they win any one or two of those. 
So at any anywhere between nine and three and eleven and one, and I feel like this uh, this kind of hits. You you feel the same, right? Ten and two. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter at Gary WCE at Chris B G and any at Winning Cures, or you can email us Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.